All right, so today on free field training, we're gonna talk about a topic that comes up a lot in the comments section, people get very heated about, and that is police impersonators. So I'm gonna give you three of my favorite stories about police impersonators, and also some things to think about on the topic. Where are you going? Get out of the way! Now, when this topic comes up in the comments, oftentimes it's from a position of people being very afraid of things that people who have impersonated the police in the past have done by using the the accoutrement of a police officer's office in order to affect some crime, a kidnapping or a murder or a rape or something like that. And it's very interesting hearing these things that people take very, very small isolated incidents and they want to make broad public policy based upon those incidents. And the real problem I see with it is that because someone uses a specific thing in order to affect a crime, they want to change how everything else is done, regardless of whether that makes sense, that making those changes would change the ability of these people to impersonate the police. So here are my favorite three stories that best illustrate why changing whether police use unmarked cars or whether we have IDs, ID cards attached to our uniforms or armbands or something else. Or uh, one, of, one that I heard uh, pretty recently was we should change all badges in the country to be the same badge, like the same shape or something. And here's the problem that you get into with all of that. So we get the marked cars one first. People say, well, police officers should never drive unmarked cars, and one of the big reasons that they bring up, and it, it's valid on its face, I'll give you that, it's valid on its face, is that it makes it easy for impersonators to just put red and blue lights in their car. And some people go as far as to say, well, there was a guy that bought a car, and it still had the lights installed, and he was pulling people over with it, and, and you know, you could do that and use it to, like, kidnap people and stuff. And I get that. But here's the thing. I don't know of anywhere that sells fully like equipped police cars to the public. So whoever did that, whatever agency did that, whatever administrator thought it was a good idea to sell the car with the red and blue flashing lights in it, it needs to get kicked in the balls. But that doesn't matter because you can. You can just buy red and blue lights on the internet. You can go buy an old Crown Vic or a Charger or whatever. And you can put red and blue lights on it. And people think that if you required that all police cars be fully marked, that that would keep people from being able to just put lights on their car and then go use that car to commit a kidnapping or a murder or something like that and get away with it. Here's the problem with that. Uh, let me tell you a story about a railroad police that were never, right? So we had a guy uh, God, many years ago now, many years ago now, but he found out that in Illinois, you could create a railroad. You could incorporate a railroad if you had a section of track and at least one car with the ability to move on that track. Right? And you had to have like a board of directors. There's a bunch of other stuff you have to do, but the, the core of it is you have to have track and one car in the state and you can incorporate a railroad. Right? And so what he did was, and the cops out there already know what I'm going to say, he incorporated a railroad because incorporating a railroad meant that anybody that checked into the railroad police that you have would see that it's a real railroad that's incorporated and would then sell you police stuff. Because railroads are allowed to have their own police departments and they're protected under federal law. So what he did was he incorporated a railroad in his backyard with like a hundred yards of track and one caboose that he was able to move, you know, 10 yards. So if anybody came and checked, yeah, he had a real railroad, he had track and he had, you know, one car and he used that to be able to create letterhead to buy a marked brand new police car market put a light bar on the roof, he got himself a uniform, badges, IDs, everything. There was literally no way to tell this guy apart from like a real railroad police department, right? Except that he wasn't really the police, he had no idea what he was doing. And so he was driving around in this car in a uniform and nobody had any idea for years until one day he got in a pursuit, right? It's always, this is where impersonators get caught as they take it a little too far, right? So he got into a pursuit, and he got on the state police band. We call it Isburn here. It's the state police radio network. And he was calling in his pursuit because he, he even believed his ridiculousness, right? And that's how he eventually got caught because he isn't listed as a police agency in the state. And so people caught on to it, and they started looking into it, and 
people were coming in and complaining like, oh yeah, this guy's pulling me over. And it, what, what are the railroad, the EBX railroad police? What, like, why are they pulling people over on the street? Are they even allowed to do that? And the, the truth of the matter is, I don't know. I don't know if the railroad police are allowed to pull people over in the state of Illinois because I've never seen them do it. It's never been an issue, right? Like, so I've never, I've never looked it up, but it seems very odd because they don't do it. And I'm pretty sure their rules say they're not supposed to do it. So he was pulling people over and that's how he ended up getting caught, but it took years. Like he was driving around doing whatever he wanted, pulling people over, yelling at people and stuff. And people didn't figure it out because who would think to complain against a guy that's in uniform for what looks like a legitimate agency and with a marked car. And when you see a marked car, when I see a marked car driving down the street and I see them pull somebody over, you know, if I see the Cook County Forest Preserve Police pull somebody over in my town, I don't check to see if it's actually them. I mean, someone could just make up a car and buy an old uniform and put it on and they could they could do that and I would never know. I wouldn't go to check on them. But if I see an unmarked car pulling people over and I see somebody out of uniform in an unmarked car pulling people over, I check on that because we had towns down here that decided that they were going to issue aldermen badges or gold badges that said, you know, the town and then aldermen. I won't put the town out there because they don't do it anymore. And they had aldermen on it. And then they were giving them cars and they were putting red and blue lights on the cars in case there was a city emergency that they needed to respond to, right? So the aldermen, at least one of them that I'm aware of, was driving around and if he saw something, and if he saw something that he didn't like, he would pull the people over, right? And he'd get out and he'd yell at them and he'd be wearing like a Hawaiian shirt and dress pants yelling at somebody on the side of the road. And all people see is, you know, the unmarked car with the red and blue flashy lights and a guy with a badge screaming at him. And they're like, oh, I'm trying to do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. So he'd pull over people that cut him off. And so we actually look into it when we see people in an unmarked car, especially if they look hinky. Now, the unmarked cars, by me at least, they all have uh, municipal plates, municipal police, sheriff's department, or state police plates. The state of Illinois actually issues plates that say municipal police on them. So even our unmarked cars aren't really unmarked. And that's where people that create their marked car, you know, the plate doesn't match the car, start to, their whole story starts to fall apart. So uh, it, it doesn't matter if you try to make it marked cars, people could make it for like a forest preserve agency or for the railroad. There's so many like little police agencies, they can make it for the feds. And I'm sure in middle of nowhere, you know, Iowa or whatever, you know, middle of nowhere USA, cops know all the other cops that are working in an area. So if you drove around with a car that said police on the side, even if it looked like professional graphics and they didn't know what was going on, they would stop them and check them. Maybe that's a thing. And in a major metro area, it's just not. It's just not a thing. I'm not checking on every marked car that's pulling a traffic stop coming through my town. I'm not going to check on them. It looks like a police. It's going to be the police. It becomes one of those things like, where is your threshold? for when things become suspicious, right? Is it suspicious when they don't have markings on the car? Is it suspicious when they're not in uniform? Is it suspicious when they don't have ID? Like, at what point does it become suspicious? And in a major metro area, you know, everything and nothing could be suspicious because there's so many people here that anybody could pretend to be the police. And in fact, a few years ago, there was a very, very highly publicized story in the Chicagoland area about a kid who was like 15, 16 years old and read a bunch of police books and learned a bunch of jargon and went and got a uniform and just showed up for briefing and Chicago was assigning him a radio and a partner and sending him out on the road in a real police car. Now we had another case, uh, three or four guys got together and they went and bought old police uniforms and they were driving around on the west side of Chicago and they were pulling people over and they knew exactly who they were. They were pulling drug dealers over and they were extorting them for money. And it turned out to be cops from another town that were extorting people for money. You can uh, Google that one up. It shouldn't be really hard to find. But they were cops for a suburb and they were coming into the city and they were extorting drug dealers. And so the impersonators were actually the police. And that's probably the most dangerous type of impersonator you could possibly come across. Luckily, they all ended up in prison. So, you know, at least the story kind of has a happy ending. So making all the cars marked is not going to keep impersonators from doing what they do because impersonators will find a way. They will find a way to impersonate. It's what they do, especially if they're going to go out and try to commit some sort of crime. If they're going to do a kidnapping or something, they're going to go find an old squad car and they're going to get graphics for it and they're going to make it like the Amtrak police. They're going to go pull somebody over. They're going to kidnap them. And... 
to, to worry about that happening to the point where you want to change public policy for it is just, it's just fear mongering. I mean, what this is, is this is people who are worried about getting a ticket because they can't see the police and like, it's not fair. I can't see them. I don't know that it's them. And then, so they want to change public policy. So that way they can't use, the police can't use, um, unmarked cars anymore because they don't want to get tickets. It's, it's shenanigans, right? Impersonators, it doesn't matter. You can make them IDs, right? I had a guy who was a janitor at a local college and the janitor of course had keys to everything. And so he went into the ID making room you know, a little area in the library where they have the ID machine and they print up IDs on little card, double-sided IDs for the college. And he went in and there was a program. You go into it and you, it's a student and you type a little box where you enter what you want in there for the title of the person. And you could type student in there or you could type faculty in there or staff in there or whatever. And he just went in and deleted out student and put police in there. So now he's got a college police ID from a state college from like, I think it was U of I or something, it doesn't matter. It was a state college, and he managed to get a police ID by just retyping it in there, taking his own picture, printed it out in the middle of the night. And the only reason I noticed that it wasn't a real ID, that he wasn't a real police officer, is that the ID for the college, I knew about that school, and it had a really, really cool badge. Like they had this little oval badge and had a picture of their building on the front and stuff. And this guy had his ID in a wallet next to like the five point star badge that almost everyone around here uses that I personally think doesn't look all that great. But he had a little five point star badge that was kind of rinky dink and it was just, you know, the state steel in the middle and it said college police on it or something like that. And I, I knew that that badge didn't match the ID. So I was like, eh, that's not right. But if I was a, a normal person would never know that that badge wouldn't match the ID. I mean, you'd, it's only reason I knew is because a buddy of mine worked there. And the last one, and probably my favorite, because it shows the limits that which these guys will go to, the lengths at which these guys will go to, to do this stuff, is we had a security company, and it was like one of these three-letter security companies, like ABD Security or something. And of course, so all their badges say ABD Officer, and they have Officer written on their back, or like Public Safety written on their back, silly stuff like that. And they drive, you know, fully marked big, you know, cars, the same stuff police would drive. I think his was a Crown Vic because it was a few years ago, but it could easily be a Charger or an Explorer or anything else today. So it says, you know, the company name on the side with a big shield and then striping all along it. And of course, just like a police car, it doesn't say anything on the front of the car. And what he did was, because it was all yellow internal lights on the car, he went and got a light bar that was magnet mount, right? And he hooked it up to, you know, a plug in the car and magnet mounted on the roof. And we caught him pulling people over with this red and blue light bar on the roof of the security car. And so you get pulled over, right? Red and blue lights come on. You see the Crown Vic. You see the spotlight. It's got like markings on the side. Broad daylight, right? Markings on the side. Can't read the markings on the side from the front. He'd pull people over and we caught him doing it one day, right? And we're like, what is this? Why is there red and blue lights on the security car? Why is he behind this person? Pull up, we're like, ah see what you're up to shenanigans right so that's how he ended up getting caught but apparently had been doing it for a while i mean the light bar wasn't brand new he'd like rigged up this whole thing to magnet mount it to the roof i can't imagine it was his first time doing it and the person in the car didn't even know it was us pulling up on it we had to find out from it so most of the things that people say where you can like you can confirm this guy's a cop like they have to have a marked car and they're going to be in full uniform and they're you ask them to see their id they should all carry their ids or the badges thing we had a guy he was building badges in his garage and selling them on the internet and he could make you a badge for anywhere literally anywhere and he would just look up what the badge looked like and he'd go order the die he was in he was a company actually had a company at an llc and he made up, you know, a website and the companies that sell the stuff that dies to make badges were selling the stuff to him. He was having stuff custom made and he would just make up whatever badge you want. You could have anything. He'd be the Illinois State Police. He was making those like crazy. He ended up getting locked up because he was selling badges that were then being found on gangbangers and stuff. And they, you know, one of the guys flipped on him and it came back to him. So you can buy this stuff. Stuff's out there. You know, there's almost nothing that you could do to guarantee that it's a cop. When you can have somebody that's in a marked car, in full uniform, with an ID, driving around pulling traffic stops for years, there's nothing you could do that would guarantee that the person you're talking to 
is really a cop. And that's the fun, the funny thing that kills me about the unmarked cars thing is that everywhere that I'm aware of, if you're getting pulled over by somebody in an unmarked car and they're just, they're off doing traffic, they have to wear a uniform, right? So it becomes a matter of what's a realistic expectation of understanding that this is really a cop, right? If the police show up at your house, they're not probably going to park their car straight out front. You're probably not going to see the car unless they want you to see the car. They're going to show up in uniform. You, you ask them for ID when they show up? No. If you do, you're kind of silly because I can print an ID in my garage too. Like that's not a big thing. But you don't ask them for ID when they show up. You see them walking in the mall. You, you expect that that's really a police officer, right? So let's set some realistic goals on this stuff. And then the last thing is that um, with the unmarked cars that... Certain states outlaw using unmarked cars. Is that certain states outlaw using unmarked cars for uh, traffic enforcement, which isn't really true, as far as I can tell. Um, the state of Washington has a rule that says uh, local municipalities can't use unmarked cars strictly for traffic enforcement, but they actually specifically exempt their state police, who are the people that are doing the most traffic. Like that's most of their job is doing traffic stops anyway. So that's kind of shenanigans. A lot of people there get really upset that the state police is like, it's illegal for the state police. They're specifically exempted in the law. If you actually look it up. So that's kind of the long and short of impersonators. The impersonators will always find a way to do the thing that they're going to do, especially if they're going to do something illegal. But most impersonators that I come across aren't actually out with like huge ill intent. There's like two, th I would say three levels of impersonators that you run into. And the first one is like the casual impersonator. He's the guy that's going to tell people that he's a U.S. Marshal or some sh stupid crap like that at a bar, right? Because he thinks he's going to get laid if everybody thinks he's a cop. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Anyway, and then the second one is the guy that's like a security guard and wants to blur the lines, right? He wants to blur the lines. He wants people to think like, is that really the police or is that security? He wants to like have people on edge of whether he's a cop or he's a security guard and stuff like that. And a lot of companies just do that as a matter of cause. Like I talked about the ABD security thing, like putting an officer on your back and stuff like that. And then the third one is the guy that's actually out going and looking to commit crimes based upon the, um, the accoutrement of the office, right? And it's that third category that we have to worry about. And luckily that is the very, very small minority of people that are actually doing this. And when they do it, they very often get caught because they're sloppy about it. And we get a lot of cases where, you know, people put, for a while you had cell phones and you could get the, the little red and blue flashy back and forth. And they put the red and blue flashy back and forth and they'd pull somebody over and then that person would call 911. He's like, why is this Ford Escape with a red and blue flashy light on the windshield trying to pull me over? And they'd drive kind of slow or they'd pull in a parking lot where it's well lit and they'd call 911 and the cops would get there and end up locking the guy up or they'd take off and find him later. Because it's, it's not that easy to get away with those types of things. Most people, I have faith, can tell when something's a little off. So if you get pulled over or you if you get stopped by somebody and you think that they might be a police impersonator, the easiest way to take care of the problem is to call 911, right? Call 911. You don't want to run. If you run, you're going to get in trouble, right? You don't want to take off on them. See a car behind you, look suspicious. You think it might be an impersonator. Keep driving slowly to a well-lit area, or if you know where it's at, the local police department, pull right into the parking lot. Get on your cell phone. Everybody's got cell phones now, so this isn't as big as a problem as it used to be. Call 911. And if they are back there trying to pull you over and they're really the police, they're going to be getting on the air telling everybody that they can that this person's not stopping for them. So hopefully the dispatcher will be able to put two and two together, even if they're not from the same agency. Now, the real problem I see with police and personators, and the problem I actually have with them, is that when they are caught, it's not always taken seriously by the courts. You want to do something about police impersonators, trying to tell guys they should be able to recite their oath of office. By the way, I couldn't. I we don't we don't say it every day. It's not something you memorize. Or trying to tell them, you know, I want to see your ID. That's not going to do anything. Telling people to do that. Saying don't pull over for unmarked cars. That's not going to do anything. If you're going to tell them anything, tell them to call 911. We'll we'll sort and drive slowly and we'll sort it out later. It's not a big emergency if it's a uh, traffic stop, right? Uh, you know, these types of things are not going to help people. They're not going to help the root problem of police impersonators using the accoutrement of the office in order to affect crimes. What is going to help is if courts start taking police impersonators seriously. All too often, we'll catch someone impersonating the police and the courts see it as a nonviolent crime 
and so it's probationable, and it shouldn't be. If someone impersonates the police, it should be a big red flag, especially if they're pulling people over in a car. It should be a big red flag to the justice system that something needs to be done about this because this person is potentially very, very dangerous. It's like when you catch someone and they're torturing animals, right? You catch somebody torturing animals or a peeping Tom, you catch somebody who's torturing animals or they're a peeping Tom, like that's something that needs to be taken seriously early before they start doing crazy stuff that gets somebody hurt. And that's what the criminal justice system should be about. It should not be about punishing the people that commit crimes, although there's a little manner of that involved. It shouldn't be about necessarily just rehabilitating people who have commit crimes, although there should be a little bit of that. It really needs to be focused at keeping this stuff from happening again or getting worse, right? If we took care of car thieves when they were kids and we took care of kids that were torturing animals when they were little, if we did these types of things, if we took care of and made sure that something happened with the guy that is at the bar trying to pick up women, saying that he's a cop, flashing around a fake badge, or putting red and blue lights on their car, like if that was treated as a real serious crime, then you wouldn't have as many people who were getting the idea in their head that they could go around and practice it and practice being the police for a while because they knew there wasn't going to be a bunch of consequ very many consequences and then go out and use it to commit a crime, you go out to commit a robbery or go out to kidnap somebody or murder somebody or something like that. So I hope this helped you out a little bit. You see a little bit more clearly what goes on with police impersonation, what the people are trying to do, and why some of the ideas people come up with to solve that problem aren't always really realistic. In fact, in my book, I don't think any of them are really realistic. There's no, there's nothing that stops people from making the fully marked car and get away with it. Nothing that stops people from making IDs, especially nowadays. And there's nothing that stops people from getting any particular type of badge. Those aren't things that are going to solve this problem overall. What needs to be done is a holistic approach of taking care of the problems when they come up so that people aren't empowered to continue using that as a ruse in order to victimize others. Until next week, you guys stay safe, take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.